Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. In this video I wanted to take a look at the new Soviet divisions announced by PC Gamer a couple weeks ago, as well as defences showcased in the 9th development blog. Make sure to check the link in the description to view the articles and dev blog for yourselves. Diving straight in with the new Soviet divisions, the first is the one we were shown in the more recent deck building video, the second Guards Tank Corps. It showcased the newer model 1943 T-34s and T-34-85s, and plenty of them for that matter, well suited for a strong Phase A and B. It seems to have access to a reasonable amount of infantry, anti-tank and artillery, but lacks in recon and anti-air. A feature vehicle in the division is the glorious ISU-152. Secondly, we have the 29th Tank Corps, and from here on in, we only have what the PC Gamer article says to go on. It's mentioned that it's similar to the second guards, but without the upgrade, and then proceeds to talk about having the brand new IS-2, so take from that what you will. It's more likely to be a heavier division than the last, that would suit a juggernaut playstyle with the focus on Phase C. It has leased units like the M10 Wolverines and Boston A20s, and I expect them to either be recon or light bombers uh, used to help transition through Phase B to C. The screenshot with the division shows off a P3 bomber, which is likely to contest the A20s in a more fighter bomber role, similar to the Mosquitoes in Steel Division Normandy 44. Next up we have the 3rd Guards Mechanized Corps, which sounds like a similarly themed division to the Demi Brigade SAS, with a focus on partisans in the recon tab and American armour to come and save the day. It is said to have strong infantry overall, and in the screenshot provided we have the glorious IL-2. I believe this division will be a favourite for those who enjoy playing around in the skies, whilst having to take a little more care on the ground at longer ranges but excelling in close range. I predict this division to have a mid-game power spike, slowly becoming more reliant on its air force as the game continues. Moving on, we have the manoeuvre group Churin, which appears to be an infantry division plus a motley crew of very different units. You will have some Stuarts to help you through the early game, followed by captured Panzer IVs, all supported by decent infantry and anti-tank options. We are shown an SU-85, and I reckon a strong AT tab will be the centre of this division to control the long range, with a focus on infantry for close range fighting. There is no mention of the division's artillery or air capabilities, but based on what we know, it looks like it will be strongest towards the end of Phase B, unless it has access to heavy tanks, in which case Phase C will be the, probably the power point. Maneuver Group Bezugli takes the next spot and is a tank division which is said to have access to a wide range of armour, including old T-70s and T-34s, but is backed up by both SU-76 and SU-122 assault guns. I personally think assault guns will be a lot of fun to use in Steel Division 2, so I'm looking forward to this division a lot. The division will also have access to captured Nashorns classified as SU-88s, as well as what were called a couple of T-6s, which I could only work out to be Tiger tanks, but I could be wrong. With a focus on penal troops and close range infantry, I can imagine this being a division for the balanced playstyle, slowly sending more and more men into the meat grinder, supported by the bigger guns. The 9th Guards Cavalry Division, also known as the Cuban Cossacks, are next. This is a division I expect to be strong in Phase A, with a focus on the T-70s and Lend-Lease Valentine Mark 9s, supported by rocket artillery for that early and panicking punch. Apparently they also feature the Osnaz, which will include some amphibious units and strong infantry. I can imagine this division being quite the cocktail of early game power if played with the Vanguard setup. They do have assault guns and medium tanks for the mid to late game, but they sound as if they will fall off pretty hard. Another big boy division now in the form of the 26th Guards Rifle Division, which is classed as an anti-infantry division. It has flame tanks, KVs, and by the looks of the screenshot, IS-1s. With this being the case, I can see this being a strong mid to late game division, which will require a lot of points not only to field its tanks, but also its heavy fighter bombers and super heavy artillery. However, 
I think it may struggle with some of the German tanks like Panthers and King Tigers, so I reckon there will be a nice 20 minute sweet spot for this division which takes advantage of the phase transition. And what I mean by that is saving up points to bring in a bunch of phase C units. In towns though, this division could be very strong from start to finish with the addition of its special assault infantry. Second to last, we have the 44th Guards Rifle Division. It's claimed to be a more balanced division, which will feature some pretty standard infantry. Also has some T-34s and T-34-85s to help out, so I think we're looking at an early to mid-game division. For the late game, I think you're going to be relying on the ISU-152 shown, supporting your waves of infantry as they charge into MG fire. Other than that, though, there isn't really much else to go on with this division. Finally, we have the 184th Guards Rifle Division. It is said to have contained the decorated sniper Rosa Shanina, who is likely to be presented as an ace unit in the game. The 184th is an infantry division with some tank support, but also some big guns like the ISU-122 tank destroyers. Notably, in the screenshot, we are shown Lend-Lease M3 medium tanks, and I can't wait to see how they'll work in game with their multiple guns. Be good to see if they can fire both at the same time, kind of like the B2s. Overall though, the division is said to work well defensively, and therefore will probably be less competitive in Conquest, but maybe more so in the breakthrough game mode. Now on to the new defensive structures, which are planned to showcase in the new breakthrough mode of Steel Division 2. Please remember that everything shown is work in progress and may not represent the final product. So defensive structures you ask? Yes, in Steel Division 2 we will have access to gun pits, bunkers, barbed wire and trenches, but only for the breakthrough game mode and campaign. Personally I'm very excited about the prospect as it will potentially solidify breakthrough as a unique and popular game mode. Since it was previously very biased towards attackers in Steel Division Normandy 44, the addition of these new defensive structures will be a great help. Also, it's worth noting certain divisions will have more or less defensive structure availability, meaning we'll see a disparity between good attacking and defending divisions in the breakthrough game mode. How these structures are implemented is as follows. Barbed wire works as a slowing device. Any unit can move through it, but will be slowed for the duration, including tanks. You currently get 3 kilometers of wire per card in the deck. Trenches work as cover for infantry, providing the equivalent cover to houses and buildings. You currently get 1.5 kilometers of trench per card. Gun pits are singular points which can be garrisoned by AT, AA and artillery guns. These guns will receive significant damage resistance while garrisoned in these structures and can be removed at any time. In the deck building video it was shown that you can get 6 gun pits per card. Bunkers are structures with stationary weapons already equipped, which are very well protected but have a limited field of fire. Types of bunkers include MG, Light AT, Heavy AT and maybe more. Availability varies between cards I believe. How these are placed is up to you. Barbed wire and trenches are drawn as a line would be in paint. Gun pits and bunkers are placed at a location and then rotated for optimal field of fire. They cannot be built on certain types of terrain, such as roads, forests and water of course. The clip in the dev blog shows this well. And it's as simple as that. I believe from both a gameplay and historical standpoint, this is a great idea for the game and I look forward to trying it out. Make sure to check out the dev diary for more information. Also, let me know what you think is going to be your favourite Soviet division in the comments. For now though, make sure to subscribe for more Steel Division 2 content in the future. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.